Hey, in this video I'll go over everything you need to know as a tank when fighting Dreadsay Reef's first boss, Lelanar and Turdasil. I won't be talking too much about gear and skill setups because that's gonna change with each patch, so most of the information regarding that will be in the description, so I can keep updating it when stuff changes. Before you reach the boss, you'll have to deal with 5 trash packs during which you'll encounter 4 types of big ads. Dreadsail Kill Cutter, number 1 priority because their lad attacks will one-shot DDs. Their heavy attacks apply damage taken and healing absorb debuffs and cannot be dodge ult or the ad will enrage. They will target a random person with a cone and a moment later everyone in that cone will get a dot that spreads to nearby allies. The person targeted with that cone has to stand still. If they're not killed fast enough, they will cast a massive AoE that does a lot of damage. Dreadsail Swashbuckler. They will throw daggers at the furthest target that will stay on the ground and do a lot of damage. They will also teleport to the furthest target and fixate on them for 6 seconds. You won't be able to taunt them during that time. Dreadsail Serpent Collar. There's only one ability that you have to watch out for as a tank. They will summon either a viper or a crab. If it's the crab, it has to be immediately taunted, as their heavy attacks will kill DDs. Of course, the viper also has to be taunted, but it's not as high priority as the crab. Dreadsail Ranger. They will channel an attack that will target multiple players and has to be interrupted. Fiery Lines will target 4 people, and they have to spread out to avoid any overlap. In the first trash pack, you'll encounter a kill cutter and a swashbuckler with some small adds. The next one is very similar, it's gonna be a kill cutter, swashbuckler, reef viper and some small adds. One of the next 3 packs will have a reef viper that patches between them. Third pack consists of a kill cutter, serpent collar and small adds. Fourth pack is just 2 swashbucklers. The last trash pack is 2 rangers, reef viper and small adds. Let's start with a short overview of the entire fight before we get into details. Bosses and adds can only be damaged while they and the person attacking them are inside of an aura of opposite element. You can pick up an aura by clicking E or whatever is your interact button on those big orbs on the sides of the arena. But this isn't something you're supposed to do as a tank. The fight is split into three phases. In the first phase, one of the bosses will come down and you'll fight him until he reaches 65% HP. During this phase, you'll summon two Archonacs of his color at 90 and 80% HP. In hard mode, the inactive boss will also summon two Archonacs of his color at 85 and 75% HP. After the boss reaches that 65% threshold, he'll teleport four times and he has to be interrupted after each teleport but he can only be interrupted while inside of an aura of opposite element. In hard mode, the person that holds the aura during that mechanic will be stunned, so there has to be another person ready to interrupt. Second phase is identical, except it's the other boss coming down, and this time the teleport mechanic will trigger at 70% instead of 65% HP. In the third phase, both of the bosses will come down. Your team will have to split in two groups, each of them dealing with the respective boss. After killing one of the bosses, you lose the ability to pick up auras, and after a while, the remaining boss will repeat the teleporting mechanic. Except this time you won't have an aura that would let you interrupt him. Now I'm gonna talk about all the mechanics and how to deal with them. Whenever I say that some mechanic deals a certain amount of damage, I mean that it deals that amount of damage to my DK setup in hard mode. Lilanar is the fire boss and Turlasil is the ice one. Both of them have the exact same skills except with a different damage type. Their light attacks, called Scorching Hack and Freezing Slash, deal on average 10,000 damage and 2,000 have blocked, so they're not that dangerous. They also apply a dot called Blacken and Glaciate for 11 seconds that deals average 7,000 damage per second. The heavy attack deals even less damage than the light attack, 7k unblocked. If you dodge all it, the boss will enrage, so you shouldn't be doing that. It applies Rattled, which decreases your damage done and increases your damage taken by 40% and Hindered, which absorbs the next 40,000 healing. Spam heals until Hindered is removed. If you feel like you won't be able to get through the healing absorbed before you die, you can also use some damage shields to buy yourself more time. Fire Weakness and Ice Fragility. After 10 seconds, applies a 20 second weakness that massively increases your damage taken from a certain element. In the first and second phase, you'll simply move to the side and let the other tank take the boss. In last phase, you'll have to swap with the other tank, taunt their boss and sprint towards it, while they do the same. Torrid, Cleave and Brisk Rip shoot 3 AoEs in a cone in front. They have a chance to apply Blacken or Glaciate Dot. You want to obviously pawn them away from the group. They will insta-kill the tank afflicted with matching weakness. Boss will attempt to channel an ability that shoots projectiles at random group members. You can only interrupt him while he's inside of an aura of opposite element. For the next 10 seconds you will spawn AoEs below you every 2 seconds. The damage ramps up with each tick. Depending on the debuffs you already had on yourself, you should be able to stand in them for a bit to avoid spreading it too far. If you're already afflicted with for example Rattled, you should walk out of them faster. It's up to you to find balance between not spreading them too much and not dying. Boss will teleport to opposite area, stun everyone and spawn one shot AoEs below everyone affected. Person with opposite area has to come and free them. After you've been freed, you have to walk out of the newly spawned small AoEs. They will insta-kill you. Weapons will spawn around the area. 
When touched with opposite aura, they will explode, killing the group. When killed, they let out a wave that you have to dodge all if you're afflicted with matching weakness. Their visuals very frequently bug out, making them barely visible. Rune mechanic. This one isn't supposed to target tanks, but it does bug out very rarely. Four people will get a rune, two fire runes and two ice runes. They need to pair fire with ice or else they will die. When it explodes, it lets out a fast moving projectiles, which direction can be controlled by people with the rune. These will one shot a tank with matching weakness, so people have to aim them away. The Atronachs with corresponding color will spawn at 90 and 80% of bosses HP. If it's hard mode, Atronachs with opposite color will also spawn at 85 and 75%. Their heavy attacks are basically the same as bosses' heavy attacks. They deal very little damage, 7000 unblocked, apply rattle and hindered. Spam heals until hindered is removed. Fire rate blockade and frozen blockade. For 20 seconds, two AoEs will rotate around Atronach, dealing damage that ramps up the longer you stay inside of it. Hounds will constantly spawn throughout the fight. Their light attacks deal only physical damage, so they're safe to taunt even if you have their element's weakness. They will also shoot out AoEs, which will one-shot you if you have their weakness, so you have to dodge them. Flow of the fight in non-hard mode At the start of the fight there's gonna be 6 wolves, 3 of each color, taunt them. After the wolves are dead, one of the bosses will come down. For the sake of simplicity, I'll now assume that it's the fire boss that became active. But it's random which one comes first. The order could be opposite of what I'm describing. The main tank will taunt him. Off tank will taunt the iron Atronax and after the main tank gets afflicted with imminent blister, the off tank will also taunt the boss. While main tank moves away to avoid being hit with any fire damage because the Atronax should have their fiery blockets active at that moment. Then, when the boss reaches 65% HP, the teleport mechanic will happen. After that, the fire boss will become inactive and the ice boss will spawn. Main tank should take the boss as soon as it spawns and also take one of the Atronax if both are still alive. And then you repeat the exact same thing, except this time the teleport will happen at 70%. After the teleport, off tank will take the ice boss to the top right corner, close to the fire orb. Main tank will take the fire boss, which will spawn in the middle of the room shortly, to the top left corner of the room, close to the ice orb. After that, you just deal with the mechanics the way I described in the previous chapter of this video. Flow of the fight in hard mode. At the start of the fight, there's gonna be 6 wolves, 3 of each color. Taunt them. After the wolves are dead, one of the bosses will come down. For the sake of simplicity, I will now assume that it's the fire boss that became active, but it's random which one comes first. The order could be opposite of what I'm describing. The main tank will taunt him and the frost atronax when they spawn. Off tank will taunt the iron atronax, and after the main tank gets afflicted with imminent blister, off tank will also taunt the boss, while main tank moves away to avoid being hit with any fire damage, because the atronax should have their fire blockets active at that moment. The main tank should also be guarded by a healer at that moment when it's taking two atronax away from the group. During the teleport mechanic, people who pick up auras will get stunned and they get a healing absorb debuff. So it's very important that you don't walk close to them with the atronax, because the blockade that swirls around them will kill them while they're unable to react. Then, the fire boss will become inactive and the ice boss will spawn. You should have two leftover frost atronach, but since it's the ice boss being active now, you'll have fire aura, so they will die in cleave. Main tank should take the boss as soon as it spawns, and also hold one of the atronach. Since off tank has nothing to do at that moment, they should also take one of the frost atronach, but still keep him in the cleave. And then you repeat the phase, with a few exceptions. The boss will now teleport at 70%, and if you want to make the beginning of the last phase easier, you can stop DPS on the boss and kill off those Iron Atronachs. This means that you'll need to use Ice Aura, which means that if the Ice boss starts channeling numbing shards, you'll have to switch Aura very fast. Or you could do that after he was just interrupted. But that's all up to the rest of your team. After the teleports, Off Tank will take the Ice boss to the top right corner, close to the Fire Orb. Main Tank should already take the two Iron Atronachs to the top left corner, close to the Ice Orb, and wrench down the Fire boss that will soon spawn in the middle. The healer that guards them has to follow. Instead of evenly splitting the group in two, you'll only send off tank and one of the healers to the right side, while all the DDs will stay with the main tank on the left to finish the Atronax. You should have enough DPS for that to happen before you need to do the first swap. And remember that weakness doesn't apply until 10 seconds have passed, so if possible you should wait for the Atronax to die before you do the first swap. If your team doesn't have enough DPS to do that, then you'll have to kill them off in the previous phase, as I explained before. If you want to see a full, uninterrupted hard mode kill without any commentary, you can take a look at my Dreadsail Trifecta video. The Lilanar and Turlasil fight starts at 2.14 and ends at 6.55. That's all. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe to my channel. See you next time.